everybody. I was sitting here at home feeling kind of blue and thinking, oh man, all the kids are, were excited to come back to school and now they're sitting at home. So I thought I would do what I like to do and read you guys a story. I have my helper right here. Here's Lucky. Say hi, Lucky. There she is. <laughs> oh, no. I can't play with the iPad, no. <laughs> um, so Lucky's going to help me and I'm going to read a story for you guys and it's called Rocks a Boxin'. And it's by Alice McLaren, illustrated by Barbara Cooney. It's one of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I know it's backwards. The pictures still work the same. So. Oh, and mine is an autographed copy. Ooh, so very, oh, very exciting. Rocks a box. Marion called it Roxaboxen. She always knew the name of everything. There across the road, it looked like any rocky hill. Nothing but sand and rocks, some old wooden boxes, cactus and greasewood and thorny ocotillo. But it was a special place. The street between Roxaboxen and the houses curved like a river. So Marion named it the River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach rocks of oxen. Of course, all of Marion's sisters came, Anna Mae and Francis and Jean, Charles from next door, even though he was 12. Oh, and Eleanor, naturally, and Jamie with his brother, Paul. Later on, there were others, but these were the first. Well, not really the first. Roxaboxen had always been there, and it must have belonged to others long before. There's a picture of everybody. The camera is shaking because Lucky is playing with it. Lucky, I'm trying to read. Stop it. When Marion dug up a tin box filled with round black pebbles, Everyone knew what it was. It was a buried treasure. These pebbles were the money of rocks of oxen. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. So some days became treasure hunting days with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then on other days, you might find one without even looking. A town of rocks of oxen began to grow. Lucky apocalypse! Lucky. This is not a toy. Thank you. Maybe you should be distracted. A town of rocks of oxen began to grow, traced in lines of stone. Main Street first, edged with the widest ones and then the houses. Charles made his of the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first, the houses were very plain, but soon they all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find pieces of pottery for dishes. Round pieces were best. Later on, there was a town hall. Marion was mayor, of course. That was just the way she was, and nobody minded. After a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built herself a new house, outlined in desert glass. Bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. A house of jewels. Are they really jewels? Beautiful. And because everybody had plenty of money, there were plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna Mae in the bakery. Pies and cakes, lucky. <laughs> and bread baked in the warm sun. There were two ice cream parlors. 
Was Paul's ice cream the best or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. In Roxaboxin, you can eat all the ice cream you want. Everybody had a car. All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. The jail had cactus on the floor to make it uncomfortable, and Jamie was the policeman. Anna Mae, quiet little Anna Mae, was always speeding. You'd think she liked to go to jail. But ah, if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There were no speed limits for horses, and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and a bridle, and you could gallop anywhere. <clears throat> Sometimes there were wars. Once there was a great war, boys against girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene, and they were all Girl Scouts. The boys made a fort at the other end of Roxaboxen, and they were all bandits. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud with whooping and stamping of horses. The whirling swords of Ocotillo had sharp thorns, and when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxaboxen had a cemetery, in case anyone died but the only grave in it was for a dead lizard. Each year when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave with flowers. Here's the lizard. Sometimes in the winter, when everybody was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all, not for weeks and weeks. But it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there, and spring came, and the Ocotillo blossomed, and everybody sucked the honey from its flowers, and everybody built new rooms, and everybody decided to have jeweled windows. That summer, there were three new houses on the East Slope, and two new shops on Main Street. And so it went. The seasons changed, and the years went by, and Roxaboxen was always there. The years went by and the seasons changed until at last the friends had all grown tall and one by one they moved away to other houses, to other towns. So you might think that was the end of Roxaboxen, but oh no, because none of them ever forgot Roxaboxen. Not one of them ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to stories of the place and fell asleep dreaming dreams of Roxaboxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on the beach and stood holding it, remembering Roxaboxen. More than 50 years later, Frances went back and Roxaboxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street, and there where she had built her house, the desert glass still glowed, amethyst, amber, and sea green. And the author's written something at the end. On a hill on the southeast corner of 2nd Avenue and 8th Street in Yuma, Arizona, there is a place once known as Roxaboxen. The events in this book really happened to Alice McLaren's mother. With the aid of her mother's childhood manuscript, the memories of relatives, and letters and maps from the former inhabitants of Roxaboxen, Alice McLaren was able to recreate the magical world as if she had played there herself. She presents us with a celebration of the active imagination of the ability of children to create, even with the most unpromising materials, a world of fantasy so real and multidimensional that it earns a lasting place in memory. Artist Barbara Cooney saw Roxaboxen as one of her toughest assignments yet, constructing a magical world out of something that wasn't there. She made two lucky. She made two trips to the desert where she found a small tin tan hill dotted with stones and rocks. A scattering of desert plants and now lots of broken glass and an old car chassis. But accompan 
Accompanied by Alice McLaren's 80-year-old Aunt Frances, former Roxaboxonite, the magic and spirit of Roxaboxon began to emerge, a magic found in the minds and hearts of the children who played there. The end. So I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope Lucky wasn't too much of a bother. And Lucky. And um, I hope that this story inspires you to do something magical with your extra time off. Um, and know that I miss you and I love you guys. And I'll hopefully see you soon.